Hi, Ryan from 3D Printing Canada. On today's episode, we'll be doing a first print and setup on the Ender 3. So welcome back. Now that we've assembled our Ender 3 here, we're gonna go through a couple little steps for the initial setup. First things first on our printer is out of the box, if you notice the frame is wobbling around a little bit, this one's not too bad, then we'll want to adjust the frame. Sometimes from the factory, these things are a little bit out of calibration. So on the lower portion of the frames, left and right, we got two bolts right here. If you find that the frame itself is wobbling around, we can undo these bolts a little bit, like so. They're in there tight, so you just wanna be careful with it. There we go. We can undo those bolts there on either side and gently wiggle the frame back and forth until it's sitting nice and firm on the table. And then we just tighten these back up again and snug them down nice and tight so they're not loose at all. And repeat that step on both sides of the frame. Like so, I'm loosening it here. We're using our largest Allen wrench that's included with the printer out of the box. And wiggle it around just a little bit. Sits pretty well. And then we'll just tighten it down again. Again, you wanna get them nice and tight. You don't wanna get too tight because these are tapped directly into the aluminum extrusion itself. So we don't wanna strip out the extrusion. And then if we're lucky and we rotate this back around as long as it's sitting on a nice flat surface, we should have no wobble to the frame, and that looks good. Okay, so our next step here is in some cases, we'll get a lot of wobble in our x-axis gantry right here. This is, ten, this is typically because of the idlers themselves being a little bit loose on the printer. Now on the Ender 3, there's only one idler to adjust, and it's on the opposite side of the two main wheels here. And what we'll wanna do here is, if we can rotate this wheel by hand, then it's too loose. We'll want to tighten this up a bit. So using our provided wrench, we'll just put that onto the frame, or onto the eccentric nut, and just rotate that around a little bit. As you can see, I've just loosened it off quite a bit here. You can see how much more play is now in the frame. And just continue to rotate it around until all that swap, slop is taken out of the frame. And you can usually hit that sweet point right about there. And that's not too bad. Right there, you can see how much little movement in is it now. So it's a lot more stable, a lot more straight. It should be relatively parallel to the bed as well. So that should be a lot better. So now that we've got most of our frame all squared up, nice and true and parallel, it's time we level our bed. So first things first is we're gonna take a power cord and plug it into the printer. You'll also wanna grab either a business card or a piece of paper. Now I've taken just a post-it note here and I fold it in half. This will let us actually set the gap between the nozzle and the bed for the optimum print surface here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip the printer on. And from the main menu itself, we're just gonna click the thumb wheel and go down to prepare. And then we're gonna look for the menu item auto home. And that's just going to home the three axis on the printer here. And then we can begin leveling our bed. Now, motors are enabled at this point. So typically what I, what I like to do is actually just power off the printer. So I've got all the axes homed, but I can freely move around the axes as I please. So one thing to make sure before we continue is make sure that your bed surface is nice and clean. There's no additional debris or previous prints on there or any sort of garbage that might uh, affect the bed leveling. So all we're gonna do is taking our piece of paper here, I'm just gonna move the extruder assembly to roughly the first corner, somewhere in here. And then I'm gonna take my piece of paper and try and slide it underneath the nozzle. As you can see here, I can't quite get it underneath. So we can use the thumb wheels on the front here to adjust the bed up and down. The one thing you wanna to try to avoid to do here is also pushing down on the bed while we're leveling it. Because any kind of pressure down here will cause the bed to be a little bit lower than it needs to be. 
So I'm just going to bear with me. There we go. There we go. So now you can see I can get the paper underneath the nozzle relatively easily and it moves around pretty freely. What I wanna do is adjust this wheel till I get just enough tension that I feel a bit of a drag on the paper itself. So I'll just rotate that back a bit. And you can kind of hear it a little bit. It's got a little bit of a slight drag. That's not too bad. We don't want it to be too hard, but not too soft either. So just adjust again. And that's pretty good. So what I like to do on this case then is go to the opposite diagonal corner. So if we're doing the front left, then we'll move to the right rear. And we'll repeat the same step again. So again, trying not to apply pressure to the bed itself. I'll just adjust these nozzles. You can see now I can get my paper underneath. And I'll back the wheel back off again. Again, we're looking for a little bit of drag, but not, not too much that it's scoring or ripping the paper. That's not bad. So with the opposite corner there done, I'll move to the front corner again and try and do the same thing. Okay, we can get underneath. It's a little tight, we'll loosen it off. That's not bad. And then we'll move back to our final back corner and repeat the step. And our back corner actually looks to be set pretty good. And lastly, if you really want, you can put it back in the center of the bed here and make sure if this is relatively flat, it should feel pretty good in the center, and it does. So at that point, our bed seems to be pretty well leveled. Everything looks pretty good, it feels pretty good. We're about ready to begin our first print. So we can flip the printer back on again. And we'll go back into our prepare menu here. And we will go under uh, control. Oh, sorry. Move access is the menu item we're looking for. And we will want to move this in one millimeter uh, increments. And we're going to go, go down to the uh, move Z access. And we're just going to rotate the wheel up here. All we want to do here is we want to bring the nozzle up off the bed uh, high enough that we can load the filament and purge some filament through the hot end. Usually 30 to 40 mil is good enough that we can get underneath here and purge out some material. Okay, and we'll go back. Okay, so we'll go back to the prepare menu again. And this time we will go down to, we're using PLA in this case, so we're gonna go down to our preheat PLA. And this will begin to heat up both the heat bed itself and the nozzle. So it'll take a little bit. You might hear the power supply kicking in a, uh, a little bit as well, but uh, usually within two, three minutes, the hot end and bed will be up the temperature here and we can load our filament. So now that we're ready to start our first print, we have to load our material. So we're gonna take our PLA right here and carefully take it off the roll and be careful not to let it unwind on itself. We wanna take our side cutters and snip a nice clean cut at a 45 degree angle. A 45 degree angle will help keep, uh, provide a nice sharp edge that will lead well into the extruder here. With the printer up to temperature, we've got it set at 200 degrees right now. I'm just going to depress the lever on the extruder and slot the filament into the filament hole here. It'll move past both the extruder wheel and the idler bearing and into our PTFE tube here. A quick note on the PTFE tube is sometimes these can pop out of their housings here. You can just slide it back into the extruder and lock it in place. So we'll continue to feed the filament into the extruder here. And I'm just gonna rotate this around a little bit for a better view. So as we rotate or as we push it through, we should start to see some of it extruding from the extruder. And sure enough, there we go. Now you can take your side cutters and just trim off the excess. 
Verify that our roll is nice on the spool holder, nothing's tangled across, and that the filament path is nice and clear. From there, we can begin our first print. So we'll go into our control menu here, and we will move down to the item, print from SD, and we're going to this case, we're going to do a test model. So in which case, we will do the test dog. The printer will heat up to its normal operating temperature, and as you can see right here, it will home the bed. If there's any filament extruding from the nozzle, we can just pick it off. It'll home the Z, and then hopefully begin our first print. And if all goes well with the bed leveling, then we should see a nice first layer going down. Perfect. So I always like to watch my first layer as it goes down to see what kind of width I'm getting out of this. And right now it looks a little bit high. So in that case, on the fly while it's printing, I can actually adjust the wheels a bit here. So when we're looking for a first layer, we don't want the first layer to be too thin. You can see on the start of my print here that the outside perimeters were quite thin. That's not going to adhere very well to the bed at all. The subsequent layers are quite flat. They're probably maybe a little bit too low, but in this case, that will help adhere the, the print just a little bit better, especially to this build tack surface, which adheres great with a lower build or a lower first layer height. So it looks like it's not too bad. to keep an eye on. I never like to walk away from a print on my first layer. I always like to make sure that things are going down well, that the perimeters look well, and that it's extruding properly. 90% of your print failures begin on the first layer, whether it be a, a bad first layer adhesion or under extrusion. That's usually where your trouble begins. You see on the screen, the screen will begin to tell us our elapsed time, the temperatures we're running, and when the print is actually finished in this case. It's also reading off the positions of the X, Y, and Z axis as well, so we can get in real time where the hot end and where the axes are relative to the bed. So, all that's left to do at this point is wait for the print to finish and see how it comes out. So we're about 45 minutes into our print here. And from what we can see, everything's looking really nice. I really like everything. The layers are all going down nice and smooth. It looks like a 0.1 millimeter layer height. It's a good print. Adhesion seems good. Nothing's curling up off the bed. And so far our print's going well. So we'll let this print go for a while and we'll see how it comes out. But so far, everything's looking really nice. If you've got any comments, questions, or anything else you'd like to see, leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much. Remember to like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell in the top corner. Thank you.